got a module to review. This one's goofy, and I love it. Stick around. <laughs> Old Man Grognard here with another review, and today we are going to be looking at a uh, module that I find rather interesting, and it just, it hits my funny bone and my sense of fun and goofiness. So let's look at, see if I can pronounce this right, Mortzengerstrom, The Mad Manticore of the Prismatic Peak by the Hydra Cooperative. And this one is authored by Trey Causey, my man. He's done uh, things like Weird Adventures, which I really like, uh, adding pulp to your fantasy games. And uh, it is the art is the entire thing is by Jeff Call. Dang, I wish I could draw like that. I can draw, but he's just it, 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 it's just perfect. And I'll tell you. I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Well, I am not much more to tell, but I mean how that works. Um, it's about 32 pages or 35 pages, depending on how you buy it. And I'll tell you about that in a minute. Here's the physical copy right here. So it's not very big. It's uh, a, It's got 5E e stats in it, but I would run, run this with uh, anything from basic on up, you know, in a heartbeat. I would I would con convert it. Uh, it's, it's the first... It's the first uh, adventure for what they call the Land of Azeroth, which they will be developing later. And here's what it looks like printed out from a PDF, like so. Anyway, what is it about? Oh, well, it's about a mad manticore. Uh, basically, the uh, manticore used to be a human wizard. He was into transmore transmorph and transmogrifying things and he uh well <laughs> he managed to transfer transform himself into a manticore uh he's not completely happy about it but he's uh he's he's dealing with it um and somehow or another you get to to get invited to his castle or keep or mansion or whatever it is on the top of prismatic peak in the gigaw mountains uh i just Trey rivals myself in great names. Gigaw Mountains, and uh, I'll tell you about another one later. But um, basically the uh, the party, and this is for five to six player characters of third to fourth level, end up either going there to check it out for some reason or another, or getting invited there for some reason or another. They leave that up to the GM, basically. Uh, and it chronicles his uh, his uh, mansion, keep whatever. Here's what the, lo the book looks like on the inside. It's really nice. What I like is it's it's a one col it's it's basically a one column, very tight, very good, um, clear font. But they also give you these sidebars, which for the most part, either they give you like say the room at a glance, or they will give you stats of whatever they're talking about in the room. Like, you know, if you're fighting a monster or something, they'll give you the, the, the stats for it, which I really like. And it's just, oh, those, those illustrations are wonderful. Um, it's, uh, it's got some really interesting thing. He likes to, he's still doing his thing. He considers himself an artiste. I'm going to call him Mort. Uh, he considers himself an artiste. And he's made com he he according to him he created hippogriffs and he created a new kind of goblin in this world goblins are created from green slime they hatch from green slime well he's managed to like take some magic you know take magic and other things and scientifically uh, change that to blue slime so he gets blue goblins who are more docile and more subservient think the minions from despicable me things like that um and you have all sorts of things to look at here. He's got, he's got his, uh, he's got a, uh, he's got a, I'm looking through the book right now. He's, he's got um, some, you know, of course chambers, but he's got like a rookery with all these hippogriffs in it. Uh, he's got some, a, some kind of, and I won't say a zoo, but it's like 
here are my creations, and they're all on the pages, and you know, they're on the cages and everything, rather. And uh, he's also got a wonderful section of the the oubliette of mistakes. And what it what it is is it's just stuff he did that he wasn't happy about. And there's some monsters in there that are great, like combining a <laughs> they got a mock. And um, there's and there's one called jam. It's a, it's like a slime or a jelly, but it's it's nice. To, it's a tasty jelly that will kill you. Uh, and my favorite, the moonster. He basically is this little creature that looks like the man in the mood. About uh, yay big. It looks like the man in the mood, and it narrates everything that's happening around it at the time. So it's kind of an annoyance creature for the PCs. You know, in case they, you know, they get it out of there. And look at this. They put this in the middle of the book. Wonderful little book. You can play it as a board game. Race to the Wim Wham Stone. That's the thing everybody's looking for is the Wim Wham Stone, which he has. And that's what he uses to transmogrify um, creatures. I mean, he he's, he just, he just goes off on it, you know. He go. He takes this thing, and that's how he he did all his his things. And you got to get the Wim Wham Stone, and some treasure if you can. Um, he he invites the character. He wants the characters there to eat them, and he doesn't like eating them. He doesn't like being a manticore, and he's always a <clears throat> while he's he's doing this. He's always apologizing to the characters. Uh, as you can see, there's there's the kind of the zoo. Here, here, he's got he's got a tiger caterpillar. He's got a parrot bear. I like that one. Instead of an owl bear, you got a parrot bear. So it talks to you while it fights you. Ant lion, which is a giant ant with the head of a lion, which makes sense. Um, this thing looks like it plays pretty fast. It could be a convention game. And it just I just love it. It he says in the back it says um, in the back it says it's like a Rankin Bass stop motion special except it might end in a total party kill Trey, no it's not what it is is a D&D &D version of Rocky and Bullwinkle that's what it feels like it may not have the puns it may not have all the humor but from the artwork to the um, to how it feels how the, the writing and stuff I get a real Jay Ward vibe off of this thing. Like it could be like Rocky and Bullwinkle or George of the Jungle or something. That kind of that kind of humor. In fact, that's how I would play it. In fact, I wanted I, I might be doing this as a pickup game of the next convention. This 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 is gonna be a hoot. And uh <clears throat> I'd love to play Morgan Strum. He said he had a German accent. He said, Yes, I am an artist. This is how I do it. Me I'd make it British. He looks so much like, um, he reminds me so much of Shere Khan from the Jungle Book that I would probably do a George Sanders. Oh, you must love my thing. Well, let me show you what I have done lately. I have actually bred these two things here. You know, things like that. Or even Charles Lawton as Dr. Moreau. <laughs> the natives are restless tonight, aren't they? Uh, that, those kind of things. Either way, it it's just it's just a fun it's a fun a fun module. Oh, and the thing that the, the reason I said it was thirty two or thirty five pages because this is the physical copy. I've got the whole adventure right here. Oh, oh, and check this out. Check this out. It also comes with pregens. About six pregens that you can use. You flip them over. There's the stats, so you can do that. And here's what's nice about the. Uh, the PDF. The PDF version comes with a little extra information about the land of Azeroth. Here is the map. This is what you don't get this from the fit if you buy the printed copy. You don't get this. Um, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I printed out the PDF too, so I can have it with it, so I can have the land of Azeroth. Um, it comes with the extras, like there's an extra character, the Cosmic Cat, which will be in the next. Uh, adventure the cloud castle of Azeroth and like I said it's got it's got see it's got it's got the map here 
and it's got the descriptions of the areas here. I can. That's enough for me to go on right there, right there. I can, I can run as a, as a matter of fact. My own world, Earth, which I named before Earth World. I didn't even know about Earth World when I named it, um, but I, uh, I'd like to take. I got you know. There's the map of my world. And then there's a little part of the thing, the, there's some kind of sea that you don't see. I'm thinking of putting that on the other side of the sea and having a part of my world too. That would be fun. Anyway, that's Morrison Gerstrom, the mad manticore of Prismatic Peak. I would just type in Prismatic Peak. Now, to get it, um, that's going to be a bit of a problem because uh, it's only available, first of all, getting a physical copy it's not going to be easy right now because they tend to do them in batches and they print out. You have to go to the uh, the Hydro Cooperative website to find out more about it. Or maybe email Trey. I think they have an email address for them on there. But <clears throat> you can get the PDF from Drive Through RPG or RPG Now for $7.99, which is a bargain for a really fun, fun module. I'm dying to run this thing. This is going to go in my group. It's got some great traps in there. It's got some skeletons that aren't really skeletons and a vampire called Thetabera, who is basically, um, she comes across as Norma Desmond because she, is a, she was a stage actress and model and chanteuse at one time, but she's just, She's in the secret room, and Morgan, and Morgan Gerstrom goes in <clears throat> and talks to her sometimes. And she's not—he's not a very good conversationalist because he's so egotistical, and all he wants to talk about is him. And, oh, and she sits, sits there in the chase lounge with like, was it? What do they mix blood and blood and vodka, or blood and, and brandy, or something? That's her drink. She goes out to feed every once in a while, but she doesn't like to do it. She's too lazy, and so. It's possible that the characters just go there and talk with her and leave. You know, just don't tick her off. Uh, that's basically what it is. Um, and so that's a nice little side adventure. I love when, when adventures do that. So here's a little side adventure you can do. And it's on the way out. So, anyway. Uh, Wartz and Gerstrom, The Mad Mythical Prismatic Peak. Get it. Play it. Tell me about it at oldmegrognard at gmail.com. And Trey, if you ever want to collaborate on anything, here I am. I know you have John Call, but I do artwork too, and I've got a few good ideas for some stuff. I'd love to take this. I mean, he, he the Wim Wham Stone, you know, the Gigaw Mountains. It's, dude, I love it. Thank you very much for all those. But anyway, until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>